I am Zarina Dimitrova, a strategic partner and mentor to businesses in the process of transformation. Join me on Grow and Learn as we explore a range of topics from personal development and career advancement to relationship building and financial management. With practical advice, inspiring stories and expert interviews, we'll give you the tools you need to thrive in every aspect of your life. Join us as we share insights and strategies that can help you achieve your personal and professional growth objectives. Welcome to the Grow and Learn podcast, lovely people. This is your host, Zarina. Today, we're going to be speaking about money, money mindset, how to multiply your money, where to invest in this shaky environment. Our yeah. guest today is Fred Moskowitz. He's a fund manager. He's an author. He wrote a book that he's going to tell you about. It has to do with green notes. So I'm curious to hear about everything he has to say, how we can become more financially free. Today, I'm welcoming Fred Moskowitz. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, looking forward to getting into our conversation today. <laughs> Very cool. So you're an alternative fund investment manager. What, yeah. what alternative mediums do you invest in? What is not, first of all, what is yeah, let's, non-alternative and what is alternative? Fund? Yeah, let's talk about that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, my name is Fred Moskowitz. I'm known as the alternative investment expert. And so what is alternative investments? For me, it is anything that's out of the traditional style of investments. The traditional style of investments are the stock market and mutual funds and all of the the investments that are sold and come out of Wall Street and financial, the large financial institutions. And so what are the alternatives? These are Basically, the whole idea is that you are investing in assets that you own and that you have some element of control over them. And so things like investing in real estate where you buy a a property and operate it as a rental and it generates income for you, or uh, the area I focus on investing in mortgage notes where uh, you own the loan it's secured lien secured by the property and you receive the the monthly payments it generates cash flow and income other type of alternative investments and assets can be things like uh having a digital product having a course that you sell online um or uh rights and royalties around a patent or some kind of a product uh, as well as investing in small small businesses right? There's many, many small businesses and you can invest in those. You can become a partner, um, become a part owner where maybe you're not involved directly in running the business, but you're still a part owner and you receive dividends and distributions from that. So these are all types um, of alternative investments. The main aspect of them is to get involved. It's largely through relationships. It's because you know someone, you have access to uh, someone that's involved, whether it's setting it up or they're selling selling the asset to you or uh, they're partnering with you in some way. And so the, these are a lot of different different examples that um, that you can think about. But the main characteristic that I like to highlight, is that these type of investments generate cash flow and income for you on an ongoing basis. And that can be really powerful. Okay, that's very interesting what you mentioned that most of these investments are found through a personal connection. How does it work with the mortgage notes? Where are these obtainable? Yeah, where are they obtainable? It's all based in in. Here in the United States, mortgage notes are bought and sold every day on a secondary market. There's a huge secondary mortgage market. And so uh, a lot of people experience this where you take out financing, maybe you buy a property or you refinance. And within a couple of months, you get a letter from the lender saying that your loan's been sold and um, giving you the contact information of the new lender that's taking over. And so that's the secondary market at work. And so we, um, as investors, we have access to that, where you can go and establish relationships with 
other note investors or hedge funds, uh, different note funds, and you can buy loans from them. Uh, and so this is uh, this is the area of activity. So for us, they're active in the business. That's where we find notes to buy. Mm -hmm. So so that's where the Lehman Brothers issue started uh, in 2008. And um, uh, some people are speculating that this time it might be uh, office buildings rather than residential buildings, the mortgage of these. Well, what is your opinion on, on this? Yeah, there's definitely a lot of uncertainty uh, in the world, in, uh, for sure. Um, I, I, My own feelings, I don't think we're going to see a repeat of what happened um, in 2008. Uh, but there, there, there likely will be some, uh, some un- uh, some turbulent times that that can certainly happen, or there might be liquidity crunch or different factors that come into play. But I do also think that a lot of lessons were learned from what happened during the last downturn. So I, I don't think we're going to see the same exact thing happen again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do, do the, investment uh, vehicles that you offer um, offer some type of uh, hedging risk hedging well uh yeah i'm i'm not offering uh anything just to to correct that but so what i teach about <clears throat> with uh with these yeah there's there's definitely some protection there the the main distinction is that mortgage notes have um they're backed by security interest in the property. So when you invest in a mortgage note, that comes along with the security interest in the property. And so no matter what happens, this is registered on, on title in the public record that there's an, a lien against the property. And anytime the property gets sold or refinanced, then they're going to go and clean, clear off all the liens. That's what uh, a title company will do when they process a, a transaction. And so that's the protection that anytime there is a transfer of ownership or refinance, all of the lenders that are on title will be paid. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you always have that security uh, backing, backing the investment. Now, of course, it's important for the lender to manage that and monitor things, of course, but uh, ultimately that's that's the security and so that's one of the unique aspects of this type of investment is that you're investing in something that gives you that downside protection and it's built in think about this serena banks have been in the business of lending and doing mortgages for hundreds and hundreds of years and they're always make sure that they're in a safe secure position and this is exactly why it's it's a business that has been around uh since biblical times it really really has been and so um the the laws and the structure for title uh property title and ownership uh rights in in the u.s and other countries it's very straightforward and uh well practiced and so that is the reason why uh, lenders are in a secured position and banks and institutions continue to lend money against real estate because they know they're in a secure spot. Mm -hmm. You mentioned also investment in courses. What does that really mean? Well, investing courses. You, what that means is you create one. If you have a skill, you so have just a skill, a startup, basically a skill, knowledge, um, you can create a course to teach the skills and knowledge that you have to other people and you can market that. And so think about this, Serena, you do that work once, right? You go through the trouble and the expense to create an online course, re record the videos, and maybe you create some uh, books, workbooks around that and you sell that. And so that's something that can be sold over and over again, and you continue to get paid, yet you did the work one time, right? The same thing with a book. You you write a book, 
the same thing. You do that work once, and then that book can be sold over and over again. If you're a musician, you record a piece of music, and if you own the, the royalties to that music, you get paid over and over again, whether it's um, it's streamed online or sold on CDs or used in a commercial uh, advertisement or in a movie, and you'll get paid on that over and over again. So these are all different um, different concepts. Patents as well, right? If you hold a patent, you can license that out to other companies that want to uh, build and manufacture the thing you have a patent for, and then you'll get paid a, a portion of, of the proceeds from what they make. So these are all different ways to uh, have that recurring income from something you did the work on one time. Um, if, I, if, if I can just uh, add my opinion on this as well, because I, I also produce courses for my other business, Heal and Learn, and Yes, it is a one-time effort to produce the course, but selling it is actually, uh, I, I would say, probably 85, 90% of the effort. So we shouldn't underestimate in this whole uh, business model the, the effort one has to put in selling. So creating the course, I'd say, is the easy part. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the, the effort that you put into selling and marketing the course, um, that, that can benefit you as well. Yeah. All right. So what are the type of people or the type of mindset that the, the, the people who seek your advice mm -hmm. uh, have? I'll tell you, um, when it comes to mindset, I feel like um, it's people that have a growth mindset. In other words, uh, think think about this. This is a concept I learned um, long ago that when we, all of us as individuals, when we grow up, you can have a, what's called a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. And what is that? What does that mean? A fixed mindset means that the mindset you have and the skills and abilities that you have, it's like you inherited them at birth. They were assigned to you and that's what you have. And that's what you'll always be, no more, no less for the rest of your life. And a lot of people grow up that way. They feel that, um, you know, they have these limiting beliefs and their situation is as it is, and there's nothing you can do. And so they live life in that way. Now, what's a growth mindset? A growth mindset is of someone that is constantly striving to learn. I call it being a lifelong learner where there's always new things to learn about. Um, it's not something you're assigned at birth. It's up to you. You have to take, you take the initiative and study and learn. And maybe you finish, you finish school already, but that doesn't mean, uh, you know, you graduate from high school or college. It doesn't mean that you never have to open a book again in your life right? Mm. No, you can, and many people feel that way, but what about the idea of, no, you can go and learn new things, learn new skills, whether you uh, read a book about it, or you sign up for a class, or maybe you watch some YouTube videos, or listen to podcasts, listen to audiobooks. We have so many in, in our modern age, we have all of these different uh, formats that we can take advantage of to learn, uh, as well as joining masterminds, joining uh, groups and associations, where that really expands, expands, it gets you around people that are thinking at a higher level, and people that are happy to teach you and share with you their knowledge, their experience, and their expertise. And so for me, that's what a growth mindset is always about. It's the idea of pursuing to get, get to um, a new level, to uh, learn a new skill, a skill that maybe uh, you can use to incorporate into your business, or maybe it's something fun that you enhance your life, or maybe it's a hobby or a sport that you enjoy that gets you in a better state of health and physical fitness, that's beneficial too. 
And so these are all different areas that um, we can pursue, but it all starts with the initiative that you decide that you want to do it. And then you put in the work and the effort to learn. Mm. I am holding in my hands one of the books of one of your favorite authors, Napoleon Hill. Napoleon Hill. Hill. I love it. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, is that's, the mo- what is that's, the most favorite teaching that you have from, from his books? Wow. Well, that book was written in 1937. Hmm. And um I'll tell you something. I've read it many times. Um, I I like the idea of re rereading that about once a year because it seems like every time you read it, you take away different things uh, mm. because we've changed as a person. And so the next time you read it, something different will resonate with you or it will uh, spark an idea in your in your imagination. And in that book, Napoleon Hill lays out the 13 steps to riches, the 13 principles, right? There's um, like faith and desire and specialized knowledge and organized planning, mastermind, all these different, different concepts. And when we study the book, you read and you think about how you can incorporate these into your life. And a lot of people get the wrong idea about that book because when they talk about growing rich, it's not necessarily about money. I mean, that that can be part of it, sure. But what about growing rich in your relationships? Mm-hmm. What about growing rich in friends? What about growing rich in family what about growing rich in fun and pursuing hobbies, doing things that you enjoy? And I, oh, so many different areas. What about growing rich in health? Mm-hmm. Have you ever met anyone that said they were too healthy? They had too <laughs> much health, right? Or they feel too good? No. Hilarious. Yeah. If you if you focus on growing your health and, and wellness, that carries over to just about everything else you do in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, funny that you're talking about all areas of life. This is also my my belief, and I'm I've opened exactly on a page that talks about the four steps that are in, essential for success in all walks of life. And yeah, yeah he here states the thirteen principles uh, of this philosophy, and and so I'm just going to read the first two because appar- apparently if they're put as number one and two, they're very important. And the first one, um, so so the the four steps, the first one, uh, ah, they're not here. But anyhow, the first sentence that explains the 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 importance of the steps is that yeah. these are the steps by which one may control one's economic destiny. And the second one is, These are the steps that lead to freedom and independence of thought. For me, this is very, this is one of the top priorities, actually, independence of thought, not to be mind programmed by trends, society, institutions. There's so many influences out there, right? There's influences from society, from government, from the educational system, Mm. from the, the people that are around us. Uh, from online, social media, so many, so many areas of influence. And so consider this arena, we have control over what those are about what we're listening to, what kind of content are we consuming? Um, Are you sitting on the couch binging some mindless Netflix series? Or do you spend your time uh, listening to great podcasts or listening to great audio books or watching YouTube videos on mindset or on some skill you want to learn, you have the control on how you spend that time as well as you have a lot of control over the people that are around you, Mm -hmm. the people you spend time with. We all have heard the uh, famous saying from Jim Rohn who teaches that 
we become the average of the five people we spend the most time with. And so if you want to change your results, change your life, start spending time around other people, people that are successful, people that might be at the place where you want to get to, and you can learn from them. I I have my own view on on this saying as well, Fred, because um, I watched a a very short video of Grant Cardone, and he was talking Mm. exactly about this this part, the five people that you spend most time with. And, and he said, he, this was recorded during the lockdowns. So he said, you know, the only people that I'm basically meeting are my family. And so I was thinking, um, it's not really the people in your physical vicinity, but it is the people you consume the most information from. These are the people that inf- influence you the most. So you give them your time and your focus, whether they're in your physical presence or not. Of course, the effect is bigger if they're in your physical vicinity. But um, it is almost as important if you're giving your attention and time to these people. So if, if you're watching soap operas about desperate housewives, yeah, um, exactly. you know, <laughs> it is one of the, the um, characters that is closest to you in your vicinity, so to say. Yeah, that's so true. I love that example. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right. but this is this is a, a big area of of focus, and uh, I love being around uh, people that are growth minded, that are high high level achievers, and good people. It feels good to be around good people, mm. and and so that's something that really resonates with me uh, on so many levels. Um, talking about being around good people. Um, sometimes I, when I can't imagine a proper conversation with people, I avoid uh, getting together in groups of people because I don't want to waste my time. Yeah. And actually, this is one of the um, one of the first learnings. I'm not quite sure if it was from Napoleon Hill, but it was one of the first pieces of success mindset that I've ever learned. Uh, it is to lead conversations that are focused on growth. They're not focused on people. They're not focused on the past. They're not focused Mm -hmm. on daily um, hurdles or whatever you're dealing with tremendously, you know, on that, unless you, you are looking for help to solve the problem. Yes. Um, But it is mostly about your plans, what you want to achieve, where you want to go, you know? Uh, So, so this is the first notable um a thing that i started learning about mindset that that was long ago probably even before the time of the secret (laughs) yeah yeah that's that's so true talking about plans talking about ideas and concepts is so powerful and it really uh you know it's really impactful when you uh walk into a room and everyone's talking about people and things you know things that people are doing or how they are and what what if you show up and you change start changing the subject and driving the conversation towards concepts and ideas and plans and asking uh, others get, getting curious asking questions like what are your what are some things you're you're aspiring to do in your life and is there any way I can help you with uh getting there like how think about that how does that not change the level of energy in 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 a conversation when you show up that way Mm, of course it's directing it to growth to searching searching for a solution Mm. yeah you're searching for a solution and at the same time you're inviting others to join you on that yeah let's talk about your book the little green a little green book of note investing. Yeah. So this book is uh, really a, a high level overview of the note investing business. And uh, yeah, it's available on Amazon. What, what I set out to do in this book is give, give uh, investors an introduction to the whole business. What is note investing? How does it work? Why is it that banks sell loans on the secondary market? And uh, how to get started, how to find notes to buy, or how to invest in a note fund and how to evaluate it, as well as some of the due diligence, which is really important, your analysis 
and making sure everything is uh, as as it should be, it's proper, and that your investments are protected in the proper way. And um, another area that we cover is how to invest in notes using retirement accounts. A lot of people have retirement accounts from their employer or from a prior employer, and that's capital that you can put to work. Uh, into alternative investments. And so I love teaching about that and sharing these different concepts and ideas, but it really provides a nice high level overview of, of this investment space and asset class that I love so much. Aren't these funds uh, usually managed uh, funds by an alternative, not an alternative, but, but by a pension fund? No, they can be, absolutely, but they can also be managed by a team of, of individuals. Uh, these exist at, at all different levels, and they have different business models, different focuses. And so uh, it's exciting to get out there and learn about them, learn about some different ones. And um, you find the one that's the right fit for you the right goals and objectives that align with you. And there's no right or wrong answer. It takes, it just takes some exploration. And so whether you're an investor that wants to invest in a fund, which is more passive, or maybe you prefer to be active and be in the business of note investing, and you can buy, buy notes and build up a portfolio. And so we talk about both approaches in the book. Um, as I'm based in Europe, I actually think, at least in Austria, um, the pension funds do not allow you to manage your fund on your own. You can withdraw it and put your money in another bank, but you're not given the authority over it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, that's um, e each country has their own uh, regulations yeah. and rules around that. Yeah, absolutely. Mm hmm all right. So yeah. where do you want to take your your life next? Your well, business? my yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking. My focus is really uh, I'm doing a lot of speaking and teaching and education about investing and different approaches. But I love teaching the idea about um, empowering individuals to get involved in the alternative investment space and the, the aspects of buying and building assets so that you can generate income and cash flow. Um, it's a big passion of mine and something that I love. And it's not something you're going to learn in school. There's no courses about this in school or in college or anything. Uh, it takes self-education to do it. And um, you get out in the world you build relationships, you learn concepts and techniques, and then that's what sets you up for success. And so that that's part of my mission is really spreading some of these concepts and ideas and sharing them with others. And I do that through speaking at conferences and events and through my body of work, through podcast interviews and, um, and my writing as well. Mm -hmm. uh, when we one of my first questions was what what kind of mindset do the people who contact you have and i actually expected you to i don't know how i imagined this uh, how you would frame it you framed it very well but i actually thought that a lot of people don't perceive themselves as, in, as investors they would say oh i am just an employee or i am just this or just that i to be an investor i need a lot of money what would you say to this argument well, I would say, no, you don't need a lot of money. You can have a lot of money, but it's not necessary. You can start with very small amount and it's about taking action and putting into practice the strategies and techniques. And what you have is the benefit of time working for you, even small, consistent actions and activity over a long time grows amazingly grows amazingly and so uh i i always tell people don't get discouraged do do the do the work put in the effort and learn along the way and be patient and approach investing as a long-term activity it's not that you're going to double your money overnight or you know invest in the next uh startup company that 
gets on the scene and explodes into a high value company, it's about slow and consistent growth compounding over time. And that's what's going to yield uh, a lot of stability and wonderful results. Mm -hmm. What is your um, safe haven or mindset safe haven? What do you like doing? Where are you at peace? Oh, I have, I have several. I love, um, I love music. It's a great creative uh, area that, that I love spending time with, as well as exercise and fitness, something I do every day. You know, Zarina, I, my work has me sitting in front of the computer. I'm on the phone. I'm on the computer. I'm sitting all day long. So at the end of the day, I have my my hour where I shut everything down and I go train at the gym and get into a whole different environment and be around different people and get in a workout, right? It feels good. Um, I love fitness. And what happens is um, you have increased heart rate and blood flow and it brings uh, oxygen to your brain and gives you energy. And that's what we all need as entrepreneurs and business owners. We need a lot of energy to do what we do. And so I'm very mindful about that, about taking care of my health and um, I love exercising. So those are the, those are the main areas that, uh, that I go to on an ongoing basis. Mm. Wonderful. Is there anything else you want to share with the audience, Fred? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would like to invite uh, anyone in the audience to connect with me. I love building relationships, interacting. And so uh, I invite you to visit my website, which is fredmoskowitz.com. And if you prefer a little bit of an easier spelling, you can visit giftfromfred.com. And it will take you right to my website. You can learn more about what I do. You can connect with me. You can um, sign up to receive. I have a special report on node investing. Happy to email that out to anyone that wants it. And I always love building relationships and networking and connecting with other investors. So look forward to connecting with you. And um, thank you so much for having me on today. Thank you so much for this informative talk. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Grow and Learn. We hope that you found our podcast informative, engaging, and inspiring. Our mission is to help you keep growing and learning, and we hope that our conversations and insights have provided you with practical advice and useful perspectives. If you're looking for personalized support and guidance to help you achieve your personal or professional growth objectives, I offer a range of services to help. As a trusted management partner and mentor, I work with businesses in the process of transformation, looking for new streams of business, as well as M&A. With an extensive professional network of experts and mentors, I can bring on board the right person or team based on the specific needs of the company I'm working with. To learn more about the services I offer and how I can help you achieve your goals, visit my website at growandlearn.org. You can also reach out to me via email or social media. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this episode of Grow and Learn, please subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. Your feedback is important to us and it helps us to continue to create content that is relevant and valuable to our listeners. Thanks again for listening and we look forward to sharing more insights and perspectives with you in the future.